Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. If you are going to Children's Chapel, I invite you forward now. God bless your time this morning. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. <clears throat> Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. As any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The psalm for today is Psalm 133. It's on page two in your pew sheet. We will recite it in unison. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head. 
that runs down upon the beard. And he lies down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our journey may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is, atoning, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I do realize that verse was not in our reading today, but I did share it. Because it talks about by Jesus' wounds, we have been healed. Now there's a hymn that I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, known as Crown Him with Many Crowns. Right? We're not singing it this morning, but most of us, I think, know this hymn. And sometimes throughout ages, hymns change, verses change. Some verses get dropped, some get added. Well, there was originally a verse in that hymn that's no longer in our hymnal, but this is how it goes. Crown him the Lord of love. Behold his hands and side. Rich wounds, yet visible above in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sign, but downward bends his burning eye at mysteries so bright. What's so interesting about that verse is the mention of Jesus' rich wounds, his wounds yet visible in glo beauty glorified. The wounds of Jesus. 
Now, I know that the wounds of Jesus may seem a very odd topic for the second Sunday of Easter. But it really is appropriate, I promise. Stick with me. So instead of ragging on poor doubting Thomas, as he gets called, I want to start by pointing out some some of the things that are obvious and then talk about why it's important regarding the wounds of Jesus. Now Jesus, in his resurrected body, appears to the disciples on the evening of the resurrection behind locked doors. He stands among them and he says, peace be with you. Then Jesus does something interesting. He shows the disciples his hands and his side. Now, he would not have shown these disciples his hands and his side had they not bore the wounds from three days prior from his time on the cross. He's showing them his wounds, right? And it is after they see these wounds that, quote, the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And then Jesus offers again, peace be with you after they have recognized him. And as he says this, he breathes on them and tells them to receive the Holy Spirit, which sounds an awful lot like the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in a way. But that is Luke's story to tell in his gospel and in the Acts of the Apostles. But for the evangelist John, this seems to be a kind of Pentecost moment. Well, you know, Thomas, he wasn't there that day. And he'd like some proof of his own, of the resurrected Jesus, like the other disciples. Who can blame him? So a week later, in the same house, a week later, a week after the resurrection, that's today liturgically. That's why this reading always comes up, right? This is a week after the day of the resurrection. And now, the same house, the doors are shut. Thomas is there. Jesus comes and stands among them and says again, peace be with you. And then, without having any further conversation or prior conversation with Thomas, Jesus knows what Thomas wants, right? So Jesus offers Thomas the very thing that he has asked for in order to believe. But scripture says nothing of Thomas taking Jesus up on the offer, right? If you look at that, it doesn't say anything about Thomas doing what Jesus has asked or offered. Instead, Thomas makes the most profound and all-encompassing theological statement about Jesus in the New Testament. He says my Lord and my God. Jesus has carried his wounds with him in his resurrected body. And they seem to be quite important in the disciples' recognition of him. If you were to look at paintings or iconography of the post-resurrection Jesus, you would notice the marks in his hands and in his side. Because scripture is clear that he has retained his wounds after the resurrection. How interesting. This may at first seem a little odd, perhaps. God in the flesh, Jesus, has gone to his gruesome death on the third day, risen to new life, defeating death, only to keep these marks on his body from his death. Are we talking about a partial healing, a partial resurrection? What's going on? Absolutely not. These may seem like signs of imperfection, but the resurrection of Jesus does not contradict or over overturn what took place on the cross. These acts of love were all a part of God's redemptive plan. There is something vitally important I think, about the fact that Jesus rises from the dead bearing these wounds. We may understand, I think, that our God, who, whose love knows no end, 
is also a deeply empathetic God to us. And the wounds that we carry ourselves on our bodies and in our souls are understood more by him than anyone else. The love that God has for each and every one of us is not meant to erase the person that we were in the past. Hear me, God does not wish to obliterate our past. God wants to redeem it. You see, the disciples knew. They knew it was the same Jesus because those wounds were there. And God wants us exactly as we are, wounded and all. And as we grow in grace in our lives in Christ, learning to love one another more perfectly and God more fully, we can look on those wounds and see how far we've come. Those wounds are stories of salvation and love that point to our loving and saving God. You see, the wounds of Jesus in his resurrected body, they help us to make meaning of our own woundedness. God in the flesh is glorified with wounds. We too may be glorified with our wounds, knowing where we've been and how far we've come. You know, if you're addressing trauma, it doesn't mean you're forgetting about the past at all. But instead, you're looking at wounds in light of the rest of your life. And for us Christians, that's in light of our lives in Christ. Now, some of you may remember in the children's sermon last Sunday, I talked a little bit about the fair linen on the altar. Well, if you ever wanted a visual reminder of Jesus' wounds, that same fair linen on the altar that reminds us of the burial cloth left behind in the empty tomb, it also contains something else. It contains on it five embroidered crosses. Every fair linen has these. One at each corner and one in the center. And those represent the wounds of Christ. Now on this second Sunday of Easter, we're reminded that the Lord Jesus Christ has risen, but he also carries his wounds with him. The wounds from his death for us, for our salvation. To embrace us in our woundedness also. Crown him the Lord of love. Behold his hands and side. Rich wounds yet visible above. In beauty glorified. Amen. I invite you to stand and join in the Nicene Creed as found in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken 
through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world's come. Prayers of the people are found on page five of your pew sheet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all the people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we are undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of protection shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in heaven with you. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy, happy it's not just a day, y'all. I know the rest of the world doesn't understand, but it's different here. It's 50 days. So you're going to be celebrating Easter until Pentecost. That's 50 days. So I know everybody's moved on, but we haven't moved on here yet, so it's still Easter. So we're still proclaiming Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, and all that good stuff. And we're still lighting the Paschal candle for the great 50 days of Easter. So 
Um, if you want, you know, you can probably go out and get your discounted Easter decorating supplies or whatever, but, and you can put them up now because it's still Easter. People might think you're a little crazy, but you know the truth. All right, so uh, this morning our announcements are given by Pam, our newcomers minister. Pam Bestshatter is here, and um, is she here? Pam, come on up. Good morning. Morning. The sanctuary and chapel still looks so pretty with all the lilies. So we especially want to welcome any newcomers, any first-time visitors that might be with us either online or in person. We have a newcomer's welcome bag to give you before you leave. And we also invite you to fill out information on this little card that is folded over in the pew back in front of you. There's space for new information. There's also space for a confidential prayer request. And if you turn it uh, or fold it over and just put it in the offertory plate as it goes by, that will be terrific. And then I can contact you during the week. So Christian formation began this morning at 9.15 and will continue through April except for the 21st because that is Good Shepherd Sunday. So I'll go ahead and, and invite you all to be part of that in two weeks. We will, after the Eucharist, we will have food and it's, it's just like a gigantic picnic with games and fun and guess what? Cricket will be out there too. So any, there you go, yeah, how, who could refuse that? Anyway, it'll be a lot of fun. We had a, a blast last year on this date. Um, so we invite you all to that in a couple weeks. The Episcopal Church Women Bible Study actually begins this Wednesday. I told you incorrectly last Sunday. It actually starts this Wednesday in the mornings at 10 a.m. Family Promise begins today for this next week. And I believe there's still there are still spots for hosts and they need some miscellaneous items. So please contact either Denise Bryan, who is out in the Narthex, or Jim Babb about those needs that, are, that we still need volunteers to. Um, the sign-up sheet is out there now. Good. We have a new ministry that was talked about in The Voice. It's called Creation Care Ministry. Tom Fitzgibbons, I believe, is chairing this. It sounds very, very interesting. Um, specifically, it involves some garden plots that we have outside, and we need volunteers to help weed the land and to prepare it for planting. And I believe that will be blessed then on the 21st, the new the prepared gardens. There may be some seeds in there by then. But if you're interested at all in helping with this, next Saturday is another day of preparing the gardens. As always, I encourage you to look at the voice. If you don't get the voice and would like to, please email or call the office, and I'll make sure that you get signed up for that. And if you need a name tag, if you need another name tag, let me know because we're we're here to, to help with that. And we look forward to seeing you after the Eucharist in Sterling Hall with coffee and fellowship. Thank you. Um, I do want to make you all aware that these lilies, the things that are beautifying this space right now, you know, they have sort of a limited life capacity here, but you can take them home and you can give them longer life. And so I encourage you after today, especially if you did contribute towards the flower fund, please take a lily home with you. Give it a good home. You could plant it. It'll come back next year. So make sure to do that today. The lilies need a good home. So you heard me say that. So please, after the service, claim a lily, claim a plant, and take that with you. Um, one thing I do want to say about Good Shepherd Sunday, so um, last year, you know, we had a lot going on this year. It's going to be some of the same kind of things. I think we've got a bounce house lined up. Uh, we're going to have, I think we're going to have snow cones being served. Um, I got a thumbs up. Yeah, we got, uh, we're going to have our own Wilson serving as a DJ of sorts. 
Um, I will have some cricket stuff out there teaching people how to play cricket. Um, the Brotherhood is helping with hot dogs and pulled pork. And there's a sign up for sides and desserts and things of that nature online. It's listed in the voice. So please take a look at that and make sure to sign up for something. It's Good Shepherd Sunday. So we're celebrating our anniversary. It'll be the 65th year of ministry of Good Shepherd in Friendswood. So. Yeah, um, what else do I need to say? I hope also, if you're getting the voice that you've read the update on my sabbatical, so my sabbatical will begin after the last Sunday in April. So April 28th will be my last Sunday before I take 14 weeks off. Father Mark Crawford will be here with you serving as the priest on Sundays, except for three Sundays. We've got supply priests lined up for those three Sundays as well. He will also be available for pastoral calls if he is needed, and our lay Eucharistic visits will continue throughout the summer as well. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries celebrated this week that I can pray for? Yes. Yes. Come forward. I don't think you were getting out of that, John. <laughs> Let's pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant John as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, John. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
For he is the true who passed the Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever are singing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
invite you to stand or kneel as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.